This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Uh, hello friends, uh, welcome to the Back to Basics series. In this presentation, I would be giving a brief overview of the principles of nucleus management in phaco emulsification and I will be sharing a few practical tips on few of the techniques. So let's understand what is the goal of phaco emulsification. As we know it, the goal is to remove the nucleus from the capsule without damaging it and also without damaging the iris and the corneal endothelium. Now, how do we achieve this goal? In most cases, we can't remove the nucleus en masse, that is in single piece. So the fundamental principle to achieve this goal is to break the nucleus into smaller fragments and then emulsify and aspirate each of these fragments through a small port of the phaco tip. So nucleus division is the fundamental principle and to achieve this, we have the following techniques the classical four quadrant technique, the stop and chop technique and the direct chop technique which has got two variants, the vertical chop and the horizontal chop technique. So let me begin with the four quadrant technique and the first tip which I would like to share in this technique is to stabilize the nucleus with the second instrument during sculpting. The tip should gently cut across the nucleus without ever pushing at it. Then widen the groove after the first couple of sculpts to allow easy access to the wider sleeve which can then effortlessly pass through the groove without getting obstructed. Number three, one has to use adequate power so the nucleus matter is effortlessly shaven off without being physically pushed at during sculpting. This ensures zero stress on the capsular bag and the zonular apparatus. The lens matter in fact should effortlessly melt in front of the tip without any physical stress and then get aspirated easily. The trend should be sufficiently deepened depending upon the density of the nucleus. Harder the nucleus, deeper the trench we should have so that the division process into the four quadrants will be easy and less stressful on the zonules. And at this stage, having a good stereopsis and excellent focus on the surgical plane is critical. While dividing these fragments by lateral separation, care needs to be taken to keep the two instruments deep in the trench and then laterally separated, especially in the harder cataracts. This ensures easier cracking of the posterior plate without stressing out the zonules. Well, the classical four quadrant technique continues to be the safest and the most predictable techniques of nucleus removal till date and with the advent of the torsional ultrasound, it has regained its significance much more. Now, moving on quickly to the stop and chop technique. This is an excellent combination of the sculpting technique and also the chopping technique. The same principles of sculpting are utilized here to stabilize the nucleus with the second instrument. The groove is widened to allow easier passage of the tip to the deeper sculpting. Here we do a single long trench and then divide the nucleus into two big heminucleus. Each of these heminucleus is then chopped into smaller fragments, typically two or three pieces and then emulsified. Now compared to the classical four quadrant technique, this is relatively quicker, much more efficient and consumes lesser energy. The significant advantage when we compare this technique to a direct chop technique is that there is a sufficient space which is created because of the initial trench. This makes the nucleus manipulation much more easier and safer uh, within the capsular bag, especially when we are dealing with a much denser nucleus. It's a versatile technique which comes in handy in most types of cataracts. Now moving on to the direct chop technique. Here we don't do any trenching or sculpting. The phaco tip is buried into the substance of the nucleus using a short burst of energy and then the chopper scores the nucleus dividing it in the process. Now it has two variants, the horizontal chop and the vertical chop. In the horizontal chop technique, the long blunt chopper goes under the axis into the equator of the endonucleus, hooks it and then the chopper is moved towards the phaco tip in a horizontal plane to achieve the nuclear division. On the contrary, in the vertical chopper, a sharp tipped chopper is placed just in front of the nucleus and then the chopper is moved vertically down while the phaco tip is moved vertically up. The plane of movement of these instruments is vertical and hence the name. Now let's go back and see some live footage. 
In the horizontal chop technique, the blunt chopper goes under the rexis, hooks the endonucleus and then approaches towards the phaco tip. And the crack is visible and as it approaches near the tip, the chopper is then moved laterally so that the complete division of the nucleus is achieved. Placing the chopper under the rexis and reaching towards the equator of the endonucleus is quite intimidating to many surgeons. But still, this is the most efficient way of cracking the nucleus since the forces acting here are much more physiological. The vertical chop. Here, the sharp tip chopper is placed just in front of the buried phaco tip and then the chopper is pushed vertically down while the phaco tip is moved vertically up ever so slightly and then the two instruments move laterally away from each other ensuring a complete separation of the nucleus. The nucleus is then rotated and subsequent chops and lateral separations are done in a similar manner until the entire nucleus is divided into six smaller pieces. Uh, in vertical chop technique, it's preferable to complete the chopping of the entire nucleus first until we have the necessary number of fragments and then it's preferable to emulsify one by one. The compactly arranged nucleus pieces within the bag provide the necessary friction and the stability while performing the vertical chop. This aspect, however, is not so relevant in horizontal chopping and we can emulsify the first fragment as soon as it is created. In softer cataracts, we need not bury the tip very deep into the nucleus substance and even a blunt Sinsky hook instead of a chopper will also do the chop. Just with a little pressure, the division can be achieved. The beauty of this technique is that all the maneuvers are done in the central part of the bag, which is a safer zone and under direct visualization. The chopper is always within the rexis margin. It is less intimidating to most surgeons compared to the horizontal chop. For a very hard nucleus, I prefer to create a small trench here to get a very good grip on the central core of the nucleus as deep as possible. In this technique, it's all about getting a very firm hold on the deeper plane of the nucleus. During the chop, we are unlikely to separate the posterior plate in the first go. We need to perform multiple lateral separation movements at progressively deeper planes by constantly repositioning our instruments at the deeper planes. Of course, such cataracts demand our patience and also some degree of skill. Lastly, the quadrant removal aspect of the nucleus management. Now, we need to emulsify these pieces. This is a relatively easier step uh, compared to the chopping maneuvers. But few important points are critical which are going to ensure clearer corneas on day one post-op. Number one, the plane of emulsification. We want the phaco tip and the fragment to be as away as possible from the cornea but safe enough not to damage the posterior capsule. Ideally, this plane would be at the plane of the rexis, which is sufficiently far away from the endothelium. Lens chatter and turbulence, they can significantly cause endothelial trauma. The judicious use of phaco energy, along with appropriate flow rate and vacuum, will minimize lens chatter. The lens fragments should be just dancing around the phaco tip while being emulsified and the overlying second instrument prevents any fragment from flying around and hitting the corneal endothelium. The perfect combination of energy, flow rate and vacuum is critical to achieve this. The amount of energy delivered is controlled linearly by the foot pedal. This final clip shows the last few fragments of a dense nucleus being emulsified. Kindly note, the process of emulsification is very controlled and the fragments are still moving around in the capsule bag. There is minimal lens chatter and the plane of emulsification is posterior. And in spite of the consumed energy during the procedure being extremely high, the cornea on the day one is clear and we have a happy patient. So this was my brief overview of nucleus management in phaco emulsification. Thank you for your attention and hope this helps.